Hello people! I'm Ginny Metherell, I'm a fourth generation witch and I do and practice folk traditional magic which I learned through my family and through my own investigations and my own coven how to do. So with the moon being bright in this autumn days and mushrooms producing their fruiting bodies I thought it'd be great to do a mushroom moon spell. So today I wish to show you how to make a mushroom moon sprinkling powder and how to use it. This is like a boosting powder for a spell. It's a bit like adding baking powder to cakes, it makes the cakes rise just that bit better. This is a really strong spell and it's going to take a little bit of work, this one. Normally my spells are pretty simple. At least the ingredients are simple in this one, it's just some mushrooms. So as you can see, the leaves are starting to fall all around, the moon is coming to fulfilment, and it is time, the autumn, for the moon. Now I've done quite a lot on the moon in my recent videos, um, especially my October Almanac series, which has got a lot of moon craft in it. So I'll put a link up here so you can binge watch it and carry out all those rituals in October. Autumn is a great time for foraging, picking the sloes and haws and berries as you go, but you also must pick before 31st of October, because after that date, all forest fruits that are left unpicked belong to the nature spirits and they guard them jealously. So don't pick them, it's practically illegal after the 31st of October. I was walking through our woods yesterday and I noticed all these different types of mushrooms. I came across parasols and earth balls, blushes and the and slightly more poisonous ones as well. I used to go foraging all the time at university with a great friend of mine called Nick who is a mushroom expert and we used to go to the new forest in the autumn and forage for mushroom and we collect the most fantastical species of them and then sell them to all the restaurants in London or rather Nick would sell them and I was just along for the ride quite frankly. The mushroom poisoning is a pretty insanely painful death so don't forage for wild mushrooms unless you are with A an expert or B you are an expert. Uh, buy them in the supermarket maybe. I love mushrooms they've got a very very magical background to them. As I'm sure you are aware there's all those pictures of fairies sitting atop a lovely and beautiful fly agaric. One of the most picturesque mushrooms that you could possibly hope to come across. I love the fly agaric. It has such a deep cultural history to it. The northern European countries tended to have folklore one of which was this red and white clad flying druid figure. These druids were known to drink the urine of reindeer and reindeer were deadly fond of fly agaric. So these druids would feed fly agaric to the reindeer and the reindeer would pass the fly agaric through their bodies and the urine that they produced after eating the fly agaric had the psychotropic qualities but not so many of the toxins. These northern Scandinavian druids would then imbibe the urine and fly because why wouldn't you? I do know some people at university who did try and eat them and ended up just being very, very, very sick and going to hospital. So don't do it, not unless you're prepared to drink reindeer's urine. And even then I think it's probably not so good. However, there's no doubt about it that mushrooms are beloved by the fair folk and the druids of old would use their psychoactive capabilities to dream of the fae and communicate with the fae. Here is a picture of a fairy ring. Fairy rings are natural witch circles. The fairies are said to dance in them. It's a really good practice for a witch, especially baby witches, to cast a circle around a fairy ring. So do it on the outside. So go round the outside of the fairy ring, walk round the outside with your wand casting a circle. Then stand on the outside of this circle and feel the air around you, feel the energy around you. Make sure you're very, you know, in tune with what's going on literally just here. Then walk forward into the circle and you should feel a change of energy. You should feel like you're walking through a doorway. Magically, for humans at least, one of the greatest uses for mushrooms is as courage 
and strength. It doesn't just give you physical bravery, it gives you emotional courage, which is the courage to stand up to bullies, for example, the courage to face your fears, the courage to understand your limitations. Firstly, you've got to choose your mushrooms. If you're going to use the mushroom sprinkling powder in many different and versatile manners, then you want to make sure that it is safe and if you've got some rather nasty toadstools in it then it's probably not but if you know what you're doing feel free to use any mushroom of your choosing okay, try and choose mushrooms that are quite nice and big and holding their shape because we're going to dry them and drying mushrooms it takes a little bit of time and effort what I want you to do is when you've got your mushrooms home, don't wash them. We're trying to keep as much water away from mushrooms as possible. I want you to wipe them over with a towel and brush any little bits of dirt from them. And you want to slice them as thin as possible. Now I'm going to use slice them on a mandolin as you can see here because it gives me those lovely slim slices. But you can slice them with a knife. It just takes a little longer to dry them. So if you can't be bothered, you could just go and buy some lovely dried mushrooms, which can be found in most places if you didn't want to dry them yourself. The mushrooms have their own magic already in them. You are just concentrating that magic by drying the mushrooms and then grinding them into a powder. It's a concentration of the mushroom's own magic. Lay them flat on a baking tray and put them in the oven, heated to 150 degrees centigrade for one hour. After the hour's over, take them out, turn them, dry them with paper towels, mopping up any excess water, Put them back in the oven at 150 degrees still for another hour. After the, the second hour, your mushrooms should be dry. However, if they're not, mop up any water that you can see with the paper towels and put them back in the oven for another half an hour. Keep doing this until they are dry. Then grind your mushrooms in a spice grinder to a fine powder. If you don't have a spice grinder, you could pound them in a mortar and pestle, but we need to get them to a fine powder like this. Now you've got your powder, decant it into a sterilised, clean glass jar. It must be a clear glass jar, not one that's tinted blue or green or any other colour. We need the clearness so that the moonlight can get to it. Now we're going to leave this jar on the windowsill for the moonlight to bathe. Once the moon is up and you've got your glass jar and it's on its windowsill, I want you to take your wand. You want to ask the moon to draw down her energy and impart her grace and strength into the powder. Leave the powder on the windowsill overnight in the light of the moon and in the morning thank the moon for her generosity and you have your mushroom sprinkling powder. So we've got our mushroom sprinkling powder all done, blessed by the moon, ready to go. How would you use it? The powder is excellent when combined with other powders, for example salt. So if you combined mushroom powder with a bit of salt and then sprinkled that in a circle, you've got a really strong immediate protective circle with which to cast your spells. If you were a Wiccan and you had an altar and you like to burn incense on that altar, I would add it to your incense and burn it as part of your prayers to your deity and it will boost those prayers. Mushrooms are of course beloved by the fair folk, the fairies, and so if you wanted to attract them, you could sprinkle the mushroom powder across your doorways and windowsills, and this would entice them to come and commune with you. If you're nervous about a journey, put some in your shoes, just a tiny sprinkle, you don't need a few grains of mushroom sprinkling powder in your shoes, and it will give you a little bit of strength, a little bit of courage. Mushroom sprinkling powder is so versatile, it is really up to your imagination on how you use it, Whatever you use it in, it will be a booster for that. It's very much up to you what you're going to do with your mushroom sprinkling powder, but I'd really like to know. Could you leave me a comment about what you're going to use it for? And in the meantime, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to put some playlists up here for you to binge on if you haven't already. And don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.